my mic cut off. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I don't know if I'm going to fix that or not, but my mic cut off. So, peace. Welcome to World of Wrestling. I'm talking about MJF and Samoa Joe. And since my video just restarted, I can talk about this at a greater length now. I don't have to talk about this just in the context of World's End, which we were doing. I can talk about this in a larger concept now. So, we're starting with, with World's End. MJF loses to Samoa Joe. Adam Cole reveals himself to be the devil. Everyone's kind of like sparked by that. I'm not. I kind of saw it coming. I kind of saw it coming. But I'm going to talk about this in a sense of the long-term storytelling within this feud and all the different aspects of the MJF feud. Like I feel like MJF has his own writer or has his own creative team or something the way that Roman Reigns does. Like, whoever's coming up with this stuff from the very beginning of his career till now, every single step of the way of MJF's career has been pretty fucking brilliant. It's been remarkable the way that he's able to maintain people's attention, to maintain heat as a babyface or as a heel. He's just the guy, you know? And I feel like MJF really tried to pull out a clean match here. He really tried to make the babyface run, baby run happen. But he was just against the heel, the mountain of heels. I was going to say the heel of heels. But the mountain of heels, Samoa Joe. Um, but he was also against an army. He was against an army. And... So many people that wanted his, that had his number, so many people that wanted revenge against him. The only thing that could have possibly made it better is if it was Dax Hardwood and Cash Wheeler under the mask working with Adam Cole or something. But to bring back the Undisputed Era, uh, there's still room for Kyle O'Reilly. If he wanted to come back, I don't think he will or he won't. But there's still room for it. But the idea of Adam Cole, Wardlow, Roderick Strong and the Kingdom, OGK, coming together to fight MJF, it almost doesn't even make them heels, which is weird to say, but so many people already disliked MJF, and the only redeeming factor of him being like a babyface was Adam Cole. It's like Adam Cole made this guy a babyface just to destroy him. And it's like kind of like terrifying, honestly. The way that Adam Cole, like, white-manned MJF was, like, some real Gentile goy shit. Like, it was really, like, crazy how he played MJF. And I don't know psychologically what this does to a man that you're calling someone your best friend, you're defending him, you're doing all this stuff to, like... Excuse me. I got, I got a little bored describing it, actually, once I, once I thought about it. You spent all this time trying to defend the honor of Adam Cole. And the entire time, Adam Cole is just working against you. It's a very, there's no friends in the industry. It's a very, you can't trust anyone. But, wow, like, did I not see it coming? When the devil reveal was no longer CM Punk because he showed up on Elimina Elimination Chamber. Or whatever the hell, whatever the fuck the pay-per-view was. I don't, I don't fucking remember. I honestly don't fucking remember. I don't remember. It was SummerSlam or something like that. I don't remember. I, I have zero idea what pay-per-view CM Punk returned during. I'm just being honest with you. I have no idea. I think it was Elimination Chamber, but I really have zero fucking idea. Zero fucking idea at all. Um, it was interesting. It was great storytelling, great long-term storytelling. But it also was the longest storytelling ever. Because this wasn't just a throwback to AEW. What I like about AEW is that they're not afraid to bring up other industries. They're not afraid to work with other industries. This was a callback to an entire Ring of Honor history, an NXT history. They even called it the same name. Like It lets you know that times are changing in, in AEW. Just when everyone was comfortable, just when everyone thought they had their heads on their sleeves, and I heard Jim Cornette and Brian Alvarez, I think that's his name, I don't really remember, but I believe it's, his name's Brian at least, but they were talking about it on the cult of Cornette. Oh, who, who are they possibly going to feud with now? Who is possibly going to feud with? Are you fucking kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? Do you, do you see how many tag teams, how many factions they pissed off in the process of getting to MJF? Do you understand how many teams they have upset in the process of trying to get through MJF? Do you understand how much baggage MJF has carried for Adam Cole? And not just that, not just that, the OGK was already pissing people off. Roderick Strong was already pissing people off. Wardlow, Wardlow has literally been beating the crap out of everyone for Maxwell Jacob Friedman his entire career. There's a lot of people that probably hate Wardlow for that. You put a huge target on your brand new factions back and you're asking who are they going to feed? They're feuding with the entire fucking professional wrestling industry right now. That's what they're doing. They're feuding with the entire fucking industry right now. They're all relatively small guys who would have never gotten a main title run shot besides Wardlow, but he can't talk for your shit, so he's not really doing it. You know, Adam Cole just stole MJF's entire life. MJF is going to have to recover and come back eventually to deal with that. If he did go to a different company, then great. You're definitely the bigger man, and you're definitely going to walk off into the sunset and be a hero wherever you go because you let that go. You didn't play with the devil. You didn't play with that. You just left. You did your thing. That's good. That's what you should do. MJF should just leave the company now. He should just leave. Spend four to five years somewhere else. Come back when you're bigger than Wardlow because you're never going to be. You know, let it go. Leave, Max. Leave now. It's a good time for you to leave. Who's going to work with you? You got FTR. You're still kind of a baby face. You have the acclaim to some extent, you know, but they said they don't want to work with you anymore. Maybe that's going to change now. But you're going to be injured for X amount of time. This is amazing fucking storytelling. This is what I mean by... People just hate on AEW to hate on AEW. It's like, I don't feel like anyone even took the brain power, or took the time to go, wow, this is one of the greatest storylines I've ever seen before. They just hate and hate and hate and hate just because it's AEW. Anything that AEW does, people are going to have a problem with because they're so inoculated to WWE. They're so focused on WWE they can't process the existence of other companies. They can't process the existence of other talent and other champions. You know, they, they just can't. They literally cannot do it. And the more time that you spend trying to bash these guys and trying to kind of crap on the concept of AEW, honestly, the cooler that you make AEW look out to be because it is better than anything else. It's better than the WWE. It's better than TNA. It's better than Ring of Honor, which is hard to say because Ring of Honor, between Ring of Honor and NWA, this is gonna, this is a hot take. This is a hot take because I feel like NWA is hit or miss. Sometimes NWA is the greatest wrestling that we have right now. Sometimes NWA is like a waste of a Tuesday night. We're gonna see tonight because tonight and day of NWA films or plays rather. We're gonna see what's going on there. And it's got to do with CW, so I, mean, I can't wait to see what happens with uh, NWA. But between NWA and Ring of Honor, I feel like it's the greatest professional wrestling shows that we have right now. WWE has been doing the exact same formula my entire life, at least for the past decade. And I'm kind of tired of it. I'm pretty bored with it. I still watch, but I feel like I watch WWE more so out of a sense of routine rather than a sense of excitement. I'm excited every single week to watch Ring of Honor. I'm excited every single week to watch NWA, especially since there's like a live chat with NWA too. So it's like we can all talk to each other and we have like our own thing going on week to week. And you get to like meet up with these people every week to talk about NWA, to watch NWA together. You know, you'll have some NWA talent like Poyo De Loco or Poyo De Mar or Kyle Davis like pop into the chat or Joe Galley will pop into the chat or something to say what's up. Uh, Lakamana will pop in. Like the guys that are wrestling the show will pop in to watch and like talk with the fans. Like I love NWA. I love. I just love everything about it. If you can't tell, it's one of my favorites. Um, I used to be excited to watch Impact Wrestling every week. Uh, the past month has been kind of bullshit. It's been a lot of like review shows as they transition over to TNA, 
which is probably good. Give your talent some time to rest. Give yourself some time to like contract some new talent to work out the details, to work out everything that's happening right now. Because it's a massive transition. It's a massive change to entirely change your brand name. Um, so all you really have at the end of the day is AEW. That's it. Global Force Wrestling didn't work out. And I think there's kind of a paranoia because of Global Force Wrestling. Global Force Wrestling, whether you want to believe it or not, Global Force Wrestling is the only reason why you have AEW right now. It's the only reason why AEW was able to come into existence at the level that it was at. Because no one else had tried to do what WWE was doing. I think the added benefit was that GFW was more of like a redneck, blue collar kind of show. Backwoods, poor white people type of show. White supremacy, racist, racist, racist type of show. And, you know, that's not good for anybody involved. And AEW is a lot more liberal, a lot more multicultural, a lot more inclusive to attract any and everybody. This main event, the continuation of the main event, the past of this main event, everything about the MJF Adam Cole storyline now, it's almost like, like I really wish I could go back and rewatch the entire thing. To like, it's kind of like when you watch like a movie or you play like a Five Nights at Freddy's game. You play like one of these games with the, with the lore. There's so much lore in this, and it's like, I wish I could go back beat by beat, moment by moment, to rewatch all these segments with Adam Cole and the Kingdom, to rewatch all these segments with Adam Cole and MJF, but I can't, and I'm not going to, because it, it's way, it's been going on for way too long. I felt like it's been going on for over a year, you know. And it's like, why can't everything be like this? Why can't everything in story in professional wrestling have this attention to detail, have this level of story writing? And I don't think it's a type of thing where they didn't know who the devil was. I think they knew exactly the entire time who was. This is one of the uh, elements where I really don't feel like AEW gets enough credit. And I really feel like there's just too many people that profit off of hating AEW you have a lot of reviewers that profit off of hating AEW. And I, I just, I don't feel like at the end of 2024, y'all going to be doing that. AEW came off hotter than WWE. And there's been some growing pains. There's been some adjustments to business ownership. There's been some adjustments to what people actually want to see. But it's coming and it's inevitable. You know, WWE wasn't always meant to work out either. WWE was directly competing with WCW, and WCW is the one that fell apart completely. I feel like AEW is going to be like TNA, and it's just going to be a forever show. I don't really think that there's anything that you could do to make Tony Khan stop putting on these shows. He might change the dynamic. He might save himself some money. He might downgrade his expenses, but it's not going to go from AEW to not existing at all. It's going to go from AEW to like an MLW. It's going to go from an AEW to like a TNA, and it's still going to be here forever. I feel like you're just you're dealing with something that is going to be here forever, and I think you just need to get used to it. Rather than hating on it, rather than any of that, I feel like if you give constructive criticism to AEW, it's going to get better, and we're going to have a product that we're all going to love. I feel like the majority of criticism towards AEW is completely unjustified. And this MJF, Adam Cole storyline is the greatest fucking factor of that. You can make fun of Adam Cole for his size, but you can't because he was literally one of the greatest champions in NXT history. He's like his, his thing is literally just like he's a smart guy. So. That was AEW World's End. That was the AEW World's End pay-per-view. And this was World War Wrestling. Peace.